Imagine existing just because of the consequences of one event. At the conclusion of Loki, Sylvie killed He Who Remains and started a new multiversal war. The first consequence of Sylvie started the multiversal war is Marvel's What If. Today, we're going to talk about it. Hit it! Marvel's What If is a Disney Plus original series loosely based on the Marvel Comics What If. The series premiered on August 11, 2021 to October 6, 2021 with 9 episodes. What If is about your favorite MCU characters if they're taking a different route. Most of the MCU actors reprised their roles, including Chadwick Boseman, which was his final MCU appearance because he tragically passed away back on August 28, 2020. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen the show yet, so please come back later. You've been warned. So without further ado, let's get into What If. What if Captain Carter were the first Avenger? We begin with narration from the Watcher, only to observe these new realities and not to interfere. In 1943, with World War II getting intense, in the world we know, Steve Rogers becomes Captain America, turning the tide of the war. However, in this new reality, a choice made by Peggy Carter changed everything. As Steve attempted to go through with the Super Soldier program, a Hydra spy attacks and injures Steve. Left with no choice, Peggy went through the experiment much to Colonel Flynn, the head of SSR, disappointment that everything they worked hard for all went into a woman. Steve and Peggy bond over the fact that they want to help in the war but can't. Meanwhile in Germany, John Schmidt obtains the Tesseract. Peggy wants to retrieve it but she was ordered not to go. Howard Stark gives Peggy a suit and a shield. Peggy heads to Germany with her newfound strength and was able to retrieve the Tesseract and Armin Zolo. She gets promoted and with the Tesseract, Howard has the idea to help Steve join the fight in the war. Peggy heads out to rescue James Bucky Barnes, Steve's best friend. Bucky joins Peggy in the fight while on a mission. Steve shows up in an iron suit powered by the Tesseract called the Hydra Stomper. A montage begins as Peggy and the others were keeping Hydra on the defensive. Johan, now revealed as the Red Skull, defects from Hitler and plans to with the war with just Hydra. Peggy and the others were on a mission to find Red Skull, but it was a trap and the train exploded, presumably killing Steve. Peggy warns Steve, but she gets information from Zola that the Red Skull plans to unleash an interdimensional being to claim war domination. The team heads out and storms Hydra's base. Bucky and the others find Steve and jumps out the Hydra Stomper. Peggy and Howard confront Red Skull and unleashes the Champion of Hydra, a large tentacle monster, but it turns on Red Skull, killing him. Howard tries to reverse the polarity to send the monster back to which it came, but it wasn't enough. Peggy had no choice but to force it back in herself and she goes in the portal with it. The portal opens up again 70 years later and Peggy emerges. She is then greeted by Nick Fury and Clint Barton to tell her that they won the war. What if T'Challa became Star-Lord? In Wakanda 1988, a young T'Challa was taken by the Ravengers, but it wasn't who they were looking for. T'Challa wasn't scared and wanted to explore the universe. Many years later, T'Challa became the famous hero of Star-Lord. As T'Challa and the Ravagers celebrate their latest job well done, T'Challa meets up with Nebula as they both talk about him going back to Wakanda until Yondu told him that Wakanda had been destroyed. Nebula presents a job on retrieving the embers of Genesis, nutrient-rich cosmic dust that can heal the entire planet. It's possible that they can eradicate hunger across the galaxy. However, the one who has it is the most powerful intergalactic kingpin, the Collector. The Collector took advantage of the power vacuum once Thanos went straight and joined the Ravengers. Yondu doesn't want to go through with the mission, but T'Challa convinced him. They head to Nowhere, a planet that is a severed head of, of Celestial, and they all plan an Ocean's 8 kind of plan. While trying to sneak T'Challa in, Thanos caused a distraction by getting the attention of the Black Order. As Nebula distracts the Collector, T'Challa attempts to find the seeds but stumbles upon to Wakanda's spacecraft. It holds a message asking the universe to bring T'Challa back home. T'Challa was surprised that people were looking for him, figuring that Yondu betrayed him and lied to him. T'Challa is betrayed by Nebula to pay her debt to the Collector and is thrown in the cell with the rest of the Ravengers. T'Challa confronts Yondu and all Yondu could say was he was protecting T'Challa. T'Challa is to be dissected and put it into the Collector's collection. However, it was all part of T'Challa's plan to get captured and keep the others out of the loop. As Nebula they retreat the seas, T'Challa confronts the Collector and with the help of Yondu, he defeats him. Yondu apologizes to T'Challa later and they head back to Earth to reunite Wakanda and united both of his blood family and his found family. On the other side of the world, at a Dairy Queen, an employee, Peter Quill, is visited by his celestial father, Ego. What if the world lost Earth's mightiest heroes? 
Nick Fury and Natasha Romanoff visit a dying Tony Stark. As Natasha administrates a temporary fix to take the edge off Tony's pain, he dies and Natasha is accused of murder. Nick knows that Natasha didn't murder Tony and wants her out there to find out who really did. Meanwhile in Mexico, an exiled Exardian prince, Thor, attempts to retrieve his hammer but he is then killed by Clinton Barton. Clinton Barton swears that he didn't do it. As Nick attempts to question Clint, he is then found dead. Natasha goes to find Betty Ross and finds out that the treatment was given to Tony was compromised but due to Betty's examination it turns out that something was administered before the treatment could have been administrated. Natasha finds out that Clint is dead and recruits Bruce Banner as he was hiding out with Betty. Meanwhile Loki, Thor's adopted brother, wants retribution for the death of Thor and he has given Nick Fury 24 hours to produce the murderer or Earth will be destroyed. The military attacks Bruce Banner and he turns into the Hulk. However, during his rampage, he spontaneously exploded. Natasha looks into the Avengers Initiative files and finds out who's committing all the murders. She tells Nick that it was all about hope. Natasha is then killed mysteriously. Nick is running out of time and he figures out what Natasha was trying to tell him. Nick goes and visits the grave of Holt Van Dyne. Nick is confronted by the culprit, Hank Pym, as he blames shit on what happened to his daughter, Hope. So he killed every single Avengers candidate. As Hank tries to kill Nick, he uses the help of Loki by creating illusions. Nick defeats Hank and he turns him over to the Asgardians. However, Loki feels that he wants to stay on Earth a little while longer as his ruler. As hope seems to be lost, Nick gets the help of his new Avengers, Captain America and Captain Marvel. What if Stephen Strange lost his heart instead of his hands? Dr. Stephen Strange and Christine Palmer were driving to a dinner, but they have gotten to an accident killing Christine. This set Dr. Strange on the path to the mystic arts and become the Sorcerer Supreme, but he still never got over Christine's death. So by using the Eye of Akimoto, he attempted to go back in time and save Christine. However, she died every single time. Doctor Strange is then visited by the Ancient One, telling him that Christine's death is the absolute point in time and it cannot be altered or risk the safety of the universe. Doctor Strange doesn't want to believe that and there are, have been ways to change an absolute point, but it was lost over time. The Ancient One proceeded to stop him, but Doctor Strange gets away and escapes to the lost library of Kalistro, to where he absorbs other beings to gain more power to change the absolute point, calling himself Strange Supreme. However, the Ancient One managed to use dark magic to split the universe into two separate timelines, to where another Doctor Strange chooses not to go down that path. Strange Supreme confronts Doctor Strange to get him to join to save Christine, but Doctor Strange refuses. Strange Supreme managed to absorb Dr. Strange and proceeds to reverse the absolute point and, and resurrects Christine. She questions what Strange Supreme has done to the entire universe as it falls apart. He attempts to hold it back and he sees the Watcher asking him for help. The Watcher does not interfere even if he wanted to, leaving Strange Supreme alone in the collapsing universe. What if zombies? Dr. Bruce Banner returns to Earth after two years of being in space. He was going to warn the Avengers of Thanos' coming invasion for the Infinity Stones, but he came back to something much worse. Zombies. How this came to be was, when Hank Pym went to the Quantum Realm to save his wife Janet Van Dyne, she contracted the virus which in turn infected the entire world including the majority of the Avengers. Those who were left were Peter Parker, Hope Van Dyne, Happy Hogan, Okoye, Bucky Barnes, Sharon Carter, and Kurt. The survivors recruit Banner to get to Camp Lehigh to develop a cure, but not without losing two along the way, Sharon and Happy, by other zombie Avengers. During the fight, Hope is then infected right when they make it to the camp, and she used her last moments to get the others into Camp Lehigh. They find Vision, and he was able to cure Scott Lane, well, most of him, by using the Mind Stone. Bruce and Okoye come up with a plan to broadcast the Mind Stone's frequency across the world, curing everyone. However, Vision had housed a zombie Wanda Maximoff, which she was resistant to the cure, so Vision kept her hunger and power at bay by feeding her pieces of T'Challa to Wanda, which was why Okoye was one of the survivors in the first place. Seeing the error of his ways, Vision helped the others escape, but lost Okoye in the process. Kurt and Bucky were also killed by Wanda. Instead of going with the survivors, Vision rips the Mind Stone from his head, killing himself and giving it to the others. As the survivors try to get to the Quinjet, Bruce stayed behind to fight Wanda as the others escape. They have seemed to be a glimmer of hope for the three survivors, T'Challa, Peter, and Scott. They head to Wakanda to save the world, but unknown to them, Wakanda was already infected, and a zombie Thanos was waiting for them with five of the six Infinity Stones. What if Killmonger rescued Tony Stark? As Tony Stark's convoy was attacked by the Ten Rings, 
but he is saved by Eric Killmonger. Later, Killmonger reveals that Obadiah Stane was behind it all. Tony makes Killmonger head of security and wants to build more weapons. Killmonger has an idea for a self-operating robot drones by using the ring made of vibranium. They need more, so Tony and Killmonger set up a deal with Ulysses Claw to purchase more vibranium with the help of James Rose. But it went sideways when T'Challa comes to take the vibranium back, but is killed by Killmonger. Killmonger then double crosses Rose and killing him. Later, Tony figured out that Killmonger killed Rose and tried to kill Killmonger with the armed drone, but Killmonger defeats it and after killing Tony. Killmonger makes the drones go to war over Wakanda, however Killmonger had different plans as he gets to kill Claw and use them as leverage to join Wakanda. He uses the drones to get inside Wakanda and leads Wakanda army to victory. Later, King Chitaka made Killmonger the new Black Panther. When Killmonger went to the astral plane, he is confronted by T'Challa asking Killmonger everything he did was worth it and stating that one day, stealing power will come at a cost. Princess Shuri meets with Pepper Potts with the proof that Killmonger sealed T'Challa, Rose, and Tony, agreeing that it will take Killmonger down together. What if Thor was the only child? In this universe, instead of Odin taking Loki as a baby, he gave him back to the Frost Giants, making a peace treaty. Years later, Dr. Jane Foster discovers an extraterrestrial anomaly in Las Vegas, and it was Thor of Asgard ready to party on Earth. Earlier, Frigga, Thor's mother, instructs Thor not to party while she leaves to spend time with her sisters. Thor, however, does not listen and throws a party on Earth because it's so primitive that Heimdall, the seer of everything, does a look on Earth. Thor goes to Earth and the party atmosphere had begun. He meets Jane Foster and they both hit it off. A montage ensues and you see more humanized familiar characters. S.H.I.E.L.D. intervenes and questions Jane. They discover that Thor's party atmosphere is spreading across the world. So S.H.I.E.L.D. calls in Captain Marvel to get Thor to cease and desist. However, the two fight and Thor wins. Later, Captain Marvel was holding back and she will not make that mistake again. S.H.I.E.L.D., however, had their own plans to use nukes on Thor. Jane managed to get in contact with Frigga to help Thor. As Captain Marvel and Thor fight again, S.H.I.E.L.D. was about to nuke them both until Frigga announced that she was coming and expected a full report on Thor's studies on Earth. Thor hurries and cleans up his mess. He was almost home free until he called his hammer to return to him, showing that all the partying he was doing. Later, Thor Thor meets with Jane and she apologizes for ratting him out. Thor asks Jane on a date and she says yes, putting on a smile on the watcher's face, feeling that this story had a happily ending but he spoke too soon as the portal opens up with Ultron at the center armed with the infinity stones. What if Ultron won? In a universe where the age of Ultron actually lived up to the name, Ultron managed to obtain his ultimate body, killed the majority of the Avengers, and launched nukes across the world killing billions of people. Thanos shows up and he's immediately killed by Ultron and obtained the other Infinity Stones. His conquest spread across the rest of the universe until there was nothing left but him. As the Watcher grieves for that universe, he is discovered by Ultron and vows to find him. Meanwhile, the ones that were left alive were Clint Barton and Natasha Romanoff. They sneak into the shield base to find out how to stop Ultron and all was given up until Natasha found a photo of Armin Zolo, a Hydra scientist that turned his mind into the artificial intelligence. This was the only hope on stopping Ultron once and for all. Meanwhile, the Watcher is found by Ultron to two fight across different universes and I believe they were being destroy in the crossfire as well i don't know clit and natasha find zolo and they enlist him to help take down ultron but he was out of range ultron's sentries begin to chase the three and clint sacrificed himself for natasha and zolo to escape meanwhile ultron pins down the watcher but escapes with no other options the watcher hides in the collapsing universe of strange supreme begging for his help what if the watcher broke his oath the Watcher recruits heroes from across the multiverse, along with Strange Supreme, Captain Carter, Star-Lord T'Challa, Eric Killmonger, Gamora, and Thor were all brought together as the Guardians of the Multiverse. They are brought up to speed about Ultron to come up with a plan to stop him by using the Infinity Crusher from Gamora's universe. As they wait to attack Ultron, Killmonger is grown a little too attached to one of Ultron's sentries and Gamora naturally doesn't trust him. Thor attracts the attention of Ultron and he commences his attack. After a struggle, T'Challa manages to get the Soul Stone. The Guardians all head up to Ultron's world and they all meet up to that world's Natasha. The Guardians team up with her and manage to use the Infinity Crusher on Ultron but it doesn't work with Gamora saying that it was only designed to destroy the stones from her universe. Natasha and Peggy come up with a plan to infect Ultron with Zola's programming which they succeeded. However, Killmonger gets the stones for himself and tries to convince the other Guardians to join him but they refuse naturally. As Killmonger tries to kill the rest of the Guardians, Zola tries to take back the stones and they both struggle with the stones 
for each other. Strange Supremes traps them both in a pocket dimension to be forever struggling to get the stones from each other. With the multiverse saved, the Watcher thanks the Guardians of the Multiverse and sends them back to their respective universes from the moment they left, except for Natasha. Being the only one left from her universe, Ultron annihilated, was sent to a universe to where the majority of the Avengers died and immediately found her place in that world. The Watcher put Strange Supreme in charge of the Pocket Dimension with Zola and Killmarker inside in case the Pocket Dimension breaks. The season ends with a monologue of the Watcher saying that he would protect the multiverse for as long as he lives. In the mid credits, as Captain Carter returns to her universe, she finds a cryogenic container with the Hydra Stompter with Steve Rogers inside. It's cool and pretty frightening knowing that the endless possibilities of how certain characters will play out differently. Sometimes I wonder what it would be like if there were different versions of myself. What if I had met my wife earlier and had my children earlier as well? What if I was still with my ex dealing with the unhappiness in 2022? To be honest, I would have blown my damn brains out. That's right, I said it. Anything would have been better than that misery I endured from 2012 to 2018. I still have nightmares thinking about it. Just a few what is of my own. Anyway, what if it's canon to the MCU and I believe that it's part of the multiverse saga and will probably conclude with Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Media. It is just an assumption so don't quote me if I'm wrong, we'll just have to wait and see. Captain Carter became the super soldier instead of Steve Rogers, much to her superior disappointment. Back in that time, the idea of a woman doing anything besides paperwork, being a wife and a mother was asinine. Even when she had the super soldier syndrome in her, they'd rather lose the war than put a woman on the front line. Tell me I'm wrong. When she actually went on the front lines and rescued fellow soldiers, she started to get the respect and recognition that she deserves. She was doing more and better than Steve could ever could as a super soldier in my opinion. Characters from the Captain America movies destinies were very different from their counterparts. Bucky never became the Winter Soldier once they got to the train scene. Steve became the world's Iron Man in the 40s, but could Tony could still become Iron Man based on his father's design of the Hydra Stomper? There's no telling how different each film would have gone since Peggy Carter became the super soldier. It would have been a cool world to see. T'Challa Star-Lord was way better than Peter Quill Star-Lord for obvious reasons. He convinced the Ravagers to be the force for good, even everyone knew who he was praising his name throughout the galaxy. He even convinced Thanos not to fulfill his quest to wipe out half of life in the universe with the Infinity Stones. He even joined the Ravagers, but you notice that he was kind of weaker when he went up against the Black Order? Like how? Yondu was pretty much the same, the surrogate father, but is still alive. Besides dealing with ego, it's said that that universe is mostly prosperous. There was going to be a T'Challa Star Lord spinoff, but due to the passing of Chadwick Boseman, that won't happen. It's a shame. Rest in peace. It's scary that there is a world without Hulk, Thor, Hulk, Iron Man, Black Widow, and Hawkeye. It really made the fate of the world uncertain once Loki took over. However, hope was not lost when Captain America and Captain Marvel were recruited for Nick Fury's replacement Avengers. Honestly, I think that Captain America and Captain Marvel would have been more than enough to push Loki's back. But I think there were more replacement Avengers that we were believed to see. I wonder how long did Nick take to recruit them while Loki was taking over the planet. Speaking of which, I think Odin went back on his old ways once Thor was killed and went back to causing chaos and destruction throughout the realms. What would happen once Loki was defeated? Odin would have came down next and I doubt he would have went down easily. Well I guess we all know now what would happen if you pushed Hank Pym too far. He lost his wife and his daughter due to S.H.I.E.L.D. recruiting them. Which makes matters worse Nick admitting that he doesn't give a damn about them about who he recruits. Nick could have been joking to throw Hank off but it was still pretty bad to say. More of the story, don't piss off Hank Pym. I'm not going to get too much into Doctor Strange due to the fact that it may or may not be a direct tie-in into the Multiverse of Madness, but his motivations of why he did what he did in this episode of bringing Christine back. I'm pretty sure if he could give up being Social Supreme to have Christine back, he would. I have another theory that I doubt that the Strange Supreme we see in the Multiverse of Madness is not the one from What If, but another more evil variant. But I will talk about that once I get into the review of the Multiverse of Madness. The What If Zombies is loosely based on the popular comic book series. In the original version, an alternate Earth where then the Mama Comics, an unknown hero comes from another dimension and affects the Avengers, X-Men, and the Fantastic Four. The story goes far beyond of what the episode depicts. It's a whole shit show in a good way. The team that was on a mission to cure humanity from the disease were picked apart one by one. The last one to sacrifice themselves was Bruce Banner. His fate was unknown to the season finale when Strange Supreme brought Zombie Wanda to keep Ultron busy. So if Zombie Wanda was fighting Ultron by herself instead of the Hulk, which means sadly, the Hulk perished in the fight regardless of Hulk's ability 
possibilities or this could be another branch reality where zombie wanda wins the possibilities on that are endless we have the survivors of peter parker chitala and scott lang the only hope for humanity has to face zombie thanos with five or sixty affinity stones this is disney plus series in development from the branch reality so we may get a resolution of the fate of those characters or we might get several episodes of unrelated people that are dealing with the zombies killmonger i believe will be the same in any universe he would just have to be for the right opportunity in a way he kind of reminds you of magneto to where he will fight for african-american rights at all costs even if he means slowing or fuel of his own to get there his plan was always to get to wakanda and take the fight to our oppressors however killmonger would have taken it too far and ruled the world one thing i don't understand if he's covert military, why does he have braids and why is identity public knowledge? I don't know, it just didn't sit well with me. His plan to get to Wakanda was the same as his movie counterpart. He tricked and manipulated everyone to achieve what he wanted until Shiri and Pepper figured out his intentions. Before they could deal with Killmonger, he was snatched up by the Watcher for the mission to save the multiverse. Why in the world would the Watcher pick Killmonger in the first place? It's beyond me or why he would chosen in the first place and choose a loose cannon like that to save all creation let me know if i missed something the party universe seems like a happy place however it seems like what comes with irresponsibility and irresponsibility of whoever thor comes in contact with kind of like project x from when a harmless party gets out of control thor was a younger more immature guy and it seems like he got off easy with his mother when she found out that he was partying too hard again and neglected his studies i wonder what would happen if odin got wind of thor's partying again I'm pretty sure that Odin would have punished Thor to the highest degree, probably would have taken his power and I don't know, sent him to a distant planet so he can earn his powers back. <laughs> what if Ultron 1 is what Age of Ultron should have been? Let's face it, Age of Ultron the movie was misleading, the title anyway. It was just a marketing strategy to get ticket sales. What I liked about this Ultron is that he didn't stop there once he obtained the Infinity Stones. It was questions on how and when did Thanos get the Time Stone if Dr. Strange ever went to Titan. I think that he paid Strange a visit right before he went to attempt to get the Mind Stone from Ultron. But it's one thing I noticed. Another is that exactly how long did it take Ultron to annihilate the entire universe? A couple months? A few years? Probably less due to his power over all Infinity Stones. But it's good to wonder. But how did he manage to cross the universes with those set infinity stones? I thought if he crossed the universes, the infinity stones were nullified. But from what I can find is that Ultron managed to look through the fabric of space and time and sense the Watcher through the Nexus. When the Watcher and Ultron were fighting, they traveled through countless universes and inadvertently destroyed some in the process. To support that matter, what infinity stones came from a different universe their powers are still the same but also have none of their weaknesses as we learn later on when the guardians of the multiverse tried to use the infinity crusher on gamora's universe even though he left the universe to pursue others he still left some of his centuries behind in the event anyone possesses a threat to eliminate him but it wasn't enough for natasha and clint to find a key that they needed to defeat ultron when the Guardians defeated Ultron, Killmonger grabbed the Infinity Stones for himself and tried to convince everyone, but they couldn't sway them. But Zola tried to take the Infinity Stones as well, and they were both trapped in the pocket dimension, observed by a strange supreme. But I got one theory since the main MCU Killmonger died with the passing of Chadwick Boseman. There are rumors that Killmonger will return for a redemption art in Black Panther Wakanda Forever that is hitting theaters November 11, 2022. But it's just rumors and speculation on my part, so take it with a grain of salt. Now Natasha being the only one left in her world is a sad moment, but what grinds my gears about her ending is that the Watcher brings her to the world where the Avengers have performed. I don't know why the Watcher didn't send her to the one universe where she has been missed the most. Okay, okay, of course there would have been some differences of the Natasha and would have brought down the main MCU Natasha's sacrifice and would have been treated like an afterthought. What if it's renewed for a second season but got pushed back but it'll be on later this year, tweeted by MCU directly. Hopefully. So what do you guys think on where would what if take the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Let me know in the comments. That's all for today. If there's a TV show, video game, anime, special video idea, or movie, be sure to contact me. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you all next time.